Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I will work on end-to-end -end Power BI project. So if you are a beginner or intermediate professional looking for content on Power BI, then this video is for you. If you want to understand the concepts, various steps or stages in Power BI, how to follow or how to create end-to-end -end project, then please watch this video till the end. You will understand all the steps which are required to be performed in Power BI project. So first of all, I'll describe you the dashboard which I will be creating in this video. First is you can see on the left hand side, you can see all these are the filters. For this, I will create the date table as well so that you can map the date table with the relevant data sets. And then you can see these are the data cards where you can see what is my total sales, what is my YTD sales, what is my MTD sales. And then coming in the center, you can see what is my month wise sales. So you can see April, May, June, July, August, September, what is my month wise sales. And it is also very tricky to get the month wise in this particular format. Otherwise, if you do it in sort, um, like if you do sorting in ascending, it will come April and then August and then go towards other months. But we have to sort on the basis of April, May, June, July, starting from the month of April. So for that also, I have created the concept. You can watch this. And then if you come towards this bar, uh, this metric start, you can see I have created store location wise total sales, YTD sales, what is my last year YTD sales and what YTD percentage growth. So you can see these are the conditional formatting and how to use that. We will work on this. And then there is the map where you can see what is my sales coming from, where is my sales coming from and which are the uh, locations, store locations like airport, commercial, downtown, residential. So you can see bubbles are bifurcated according to the store location. And then coming to this particular graph, you can say clustered, uh, this is showing me top five products on the basis of revenue, right? So we will be working on all these things. There are so many other things as well. And there is one pro tip at the end. So there are so many things which are really helpful. If you can watch this, you will get to know so many things. And if you guys are new to this channel, please do subscribe. If you're looking for the content related to data analytics, and if you really like it please like and share across with your friends now in order to create this dashboard we will follow five stages in microsoft power bi first stage is importing the data from the databases it can be sql it can be excel csv azure or any other database for example if i click on get data you can see these are the data sources common data sources if i click on more you will get to know so many other data sources so wherever you your data is stored you can pull in the data from there and use that for your purpose right so once the data is imported we will build the relationship between these tables after that third stage would be cleaning the data whatever data that you have imported you will have to clean or modify according to the desired problem statement so for that you would need power query as well as dax after this stage is completed you will follow data modeling where the data flow will be defined and finally we will create the dashboard so these are the five stages that we will follow right so coming to the first step that is importing the data in our case the data is in csv format so what we will do we will click on get data click on text and csv right so these are the tables products sales and stores these are the three csv files that we have to import so first i'll click on products and automatically it will import the data from that table so it looks good so we can load So products is loaded. Similarly, we'll go to sales. Sales will take some more time because it has multiple records. I think somewhere around eight to nine like records in the sales table.
great now finally we will import stores this also looks good we can load this is the data set that i have taken from maven uh, website so you can refer that as well i will share the data set in the link as well you can uh, download from anywhere right so now the data set has been loaded you can see here in this icon data products table is this we have five columns with 35 rows right then if we go to sales we have five columns with roughly around seven lakhs forty thousand records and finally stores where we are having five columns all right so now we have imported the data can we see the relationship between these table yes as you can see power bi has created the relationship between products table sales table and store table right so sales table can be a transactional table products can be a master table fact table and stores can be a master table right so you can see there is a one to many relationship so products will be a master table where the product id will be unique this product id will be present in the sales table multiple times so that is why it is many many is asterisk sign similarly with store to sales table it is one to many and direction you can see from stores towards sales it is going with the arrow right so now the relationship has been built automatically and this is correct it is good to go now what we have to do is we have to create a date calendar or we can do it later on as well so what are the steps so first step is importing the data from csv so this is what we have done second is add columns in the sales table so we have sales table i'll tell you why we have to add more columns see this is the sales table right we have the sales id then date invoice date you can say then what is the store id product id and the number of units sold on that particular date for that particular id right for this table i want to add the store names product names and the product pricing right for example product id 8 if i go to the products table for product id 8 i know this is the deck of cards and product categories games what is the cost cost is 3.99 dollars and the pricing is 6.99 dollars right so i want to add all these columns in this table is this possible yes as this product id can be the key through which i can fetch the data from that particular table so for this i would need to create lookup table or i can do this same activity in power query so how you can do this in power query we have to use the join function let's go to the power query here we are at the power query editor if you go to the sales table we want to add some of the columns from the product table so if i go back to the sales table here there is an option of merge queries and you can see there is arrow for merge queries as new as well but i don't want to create a new table so let's do it with merge queries instead so now this table i want to join this with the products table on product id right i'll just select product id in the both tables now this is left outer what do you mean by left outer that means all the records from the first table that is sales table and whatever is matching will come from the second table this is what we want so left outer is the perfect join for us otherwise there are various other options like right join where you will get the right matching and uh, all the only matching from the first table right then full outer will be all records from both the tables right similarly all other join kinds are there so in our case we will use left outer and click ok so now you can see there is a table option from here i want product name product category product cost and product price let's take all these four columns and click ok so now you can see you will have all these columns 
right so now let's see one thing let's close this and save i want to show you one thing which is very very important once this is loaded you will see some of the columns where we have to take sum their data type should be in the whole number or decimal format for example this product price right if i want to take the sum of product price so if i go to dashboard right if i click on a data card and click on sales product price and you will get 10.99 dollars so what is 10.99 dollars if i take the sum all right if i take the new measure and take a sum of it sum price let's say then it would be calculate sum of sales products product price correct and bracket closed and now if i take this measure in data card bang this is error so what visual is saying i cannot calculate or i cannot make sum of some column which is in text data type right so for example if you see this particular column this data type is text product cost is also text right if we go to units it is whole number that is why if i create a measure for units it will be correct so what i have to do is i have to change the data type as well so if i change the data type from here is it possible let's see you cannot or we cannot automatically convert the column to decimal number type so what is the challenge the challenge is the symbol dollar symbol so how to address this we will go back to the edit query right now for this you can see this is text now you can't change to directly like decimal number for example it will show error so if we have to remove the last step you can just cross from here it will go back to the previous version now what you have to do is you have to remove the dollar function you will right click and you will just click on replace values you have to replace dollar with the blank and click ok and now you have to do one more step for this because there is one space over here before the number so you have to trim so what you can do is click on transform click on trim so it will trim from both the ends similarly do this for product cost replace values dollar replace with blank right now you will do this transform and trim perfect now we can change the data type to decimal number this is what we wanted right so now we have this one more column we can add which is the sum unit multiplied by the price so for that click on add column custom column create sum which is equal to units multiplied by pricing and click ok and same sum should be in decimal number perfect now you can just click on home close and apply perfect so now you can see for these columns you can see the data type is decimal number this is what we wanted if we go back you will see the sum price has been perfectly fine now like there was error before now there is no error because the data type has been changed so it is very important for any one of you to understand the data type and see for each and every column what is the data type and is it as desired by you right 
so now uh, this is not required I'll just remove this for the time being now we have all these columns right this we will use later on for example if I have to take the sum I'll just click on card and this sum is there correct so this is my total sum 12 million is my total sales till now from whatever date the data is there all right so now we have added the columns this will be helpful while we will be creating the dashboard so let's go ahead and create a date calendar so if we go back to our steps right second step was add columns in the sales table that we have already done third step is creating a date table how the date table is created and what is the purpose first of all so if we go to the sales table we have this date why can't we use this date only we can but this is not dynamic dynamic in the sense you can use this date but where is the year where is the month where is the quarter if your financial year is starting from the april month april to march cycle how will you define in the power bi system you have to define and explain to power bi that april will be my first month and march will be my 12th month right otherwise it will take january as your first month so you have to define this somewhere so it is always the best option if you can create a date table and from date table you can combine or map all other tables where the date is present right so for creating the date table we will go to date table tools new table now you can just define this as date equal to calendar right and we have to take the minimum of the sales date right so minimum of sales date bracket closed comma max of sales date so whatever is the invoice minimum and maximum it should stay in this between right so we are defining this is totally dynamic right now we have this date column we can change this data type to only date we don't need time right now because anyway it is in zero so let's click on date so now it is first of april so you can see the data set is starting from first of april there is no date beyond before this right now we have date now we need to create a month year so for that create a new column month year right so month year would be so we'll use format function date comma and format should be three m's and then yy right so this is the format that we want in this so it will show me april 21 and so and so forth you can see right now create one more column as start of year we want start of year so that we can define other things as well start, start of year can be done from the formula start of year we'll take date and it should be in the format of 31.3 so 31.3 is the format that we want so that the first month should be april right right so now you can see start of month is first april 21 and first april 22 so there is no data beyond 23 also otherwise there would have been 1104 2023 right so now once the start of year is there you can create the fiscal year fiscal year fiscal year is simply the year function on the start of date right bracket closed and this is fiscal year you can see fiscal year would be 21 and 22 now we want financial year financial year as in if we are in the year 22 23 that means from the first week of april 22 
till march 23 how to create that this is very important so let's create fy is equal to let's take this in the new call new row fy right and combine this with the right of fiscal year right fiscal year comma 2 so what we want is from here 2021 we want 21 so if we take from right function so it will fetch two characters 21 21 correct bracket close and then we want this sign again and and means concatenate right again we want right of fiscal year right plus one whatever is the fiscal year like in this case it is 21 so it should be 21 plus 1 that is 22 comma 2 bracket closed right so this uh, this should come as 21 22 f by 21 22 all right so if you want space in between f y and 21 22 you can create the space here f y space and enter Right, so now you can see FY is 21-22 and 22-23. So this will show 21-22 means from the month of April 21 till the month of March 22. So 12 months starting from the April month. Right, so this is what we wanted here. Now we have financial year, we have month year. Now we want quarter as well. So for quarter, QTR number equal to we want to use quotient quotient is used when we want to fetch only numeric value when there is text as well so we will get the output in numeric quotient of date difference function date diff, right date difference of start of year from date table date right on the basis of month bracket closed comma three so the quarter will change with the three months right there is an interval of three so bracket closed plus one and enter because uh, first quarter otherwise if we have not done plus one it would have taken january february march as quarter one we want april may june as quarter one right so this is what it is showing here now if you want to have q1 q2 q3 q4 so it is fairly easy just to add q in front of that that is quarter is equal to q right m percent then quarter number perfect so you can have q1 q2 q3 and q4 this is what we want in our dashboard now we have created the date table let's see what are the next steps that we have to follow first step is completed second is also completed third step was creating a date table that is also completed now you can check the relationships whatever are already created just check whichever is the left relationship which you can create so let's go to the model so we already have the relationship between product table and sales table and store table and sales table. Now you need to create a relationship between date master versus sales table. So you have date in sales, right? So you can drag this and put in the date of date table. So automatically the Power BI system will make one to many relationship between these two tables. Now, whatever you keep any filter over here automatically the data will be filtered so this is how it should look like and now our fourth step is also done now we have to create the measures so this is all about sales dashboard so we will be focusing more on ytd sales ytd is year till date sales then mtd sales then what is my percentage growth versus last year then month on month percentages so all those kind of measures we have to create right so let's go to our data right and go to table tools t 
click on new table and you can define any name like key measures or measures right equal to blank the name of the object table cannot be the reserve string all right so we can't create measures so you you can just define key measures all right and press enter so now this has been created you can keep all your measures in one table so that you can you know plan and you can organize your things right so now you can click here and click on new measure and now whatever measure you want to create you can easily prepare from here for example i will start from total sales right so what is total sales total sales equal to calculate sum of my sales sales is in the sales table that we have already created sales of sum right and bracket closed so this is my total sales now if you go back to the dashboard if you click here and have a data card of total sales so this is your total sales which is matching right so our measure is perfectly fine now let's create ytd sales so for ytd sales we have to use the function total ytd ytd sales equal to total ytd bracket now we have to select total sales here comma and then date table date date and very important part we have to use 31 by 3 because we have to start our financial year from the month of april right and then bracket closed if you are using your financial year which is starting from january then you don't need to write 31 by 3 right so if i add financial year or ytd here let's say ytd sales so you will be able to see the ytd sales over here right now let's create last year ytd sales ly ytd sales is equal to calculate which is total or where is my ytd sales yeah so calculate the ytd sales when the same period for the last year right and again date from the date table bracket closed this is my lytd now if you want to see i will add lytd also here right now if i add a filter of fiscal year right and if i go to setting in the slicer it should be a drop down right and if i select 2022 this year right for 2022 my total sales is 4.61 million that is what i am getting 4.61 million in ytd sales last year till this particular month i did a sales of 3.65 million so that is what it is showing right so there is some growth from 6.3.65 to this year 4.61 so there is a growth right now let's calculate mtd sales FTD sales is equal to total in this we will use total mtd as a function right and then write total sales comma date table and bracket close simple so this is how you will get the mtd sales again i have to get last year mtd so for that last year mtd sales is equal to calculate simple mtd sales comma same period 
last year for my date bracket closed now if i want to depict this in a matrix table so i'll just click here matrix let's say we analyze for one particular product i'll click product name right now you can add all these sales product total sales then what is my ytd sales right now you have ytd sales then you can have last year ytd sales and then you can have mtd as well now i would like to add month filter as well so from here you can select month here right for example if i select may month you can see the date is data is changing total sales is different for financial 22 ytd is different then lytd is different mtd is different so you would be able to see total sales will be coming for the selected month may month and same is coming for the mtd ytd is coming till the month of may april plus may two month sales right and last year is uh, is like last year april plus last year may right if i just clear this now you can see the total sales in ytd sales is same which is the case right now in the same table i want to see what is my growth percentage versus last year so for that i would need to create a ytd growth percentage right so this will be ytd growth percentage equal to calculate we have to divide numerator and denominator right so in numerator we will have ytd sales minus last year ytd sales bracket closed right comma denominator would be last year ytd sales and now you can close the bracket after zero bracket closed yeah and press enter so, so now if i add this in this particular table you would be able to see the growth and i can just change the format from here if i click on percentage the values will be displayed in the percentages right so now if i click on focus mode you can see for all the products you can see if there is a product growth or degrowth versus last year overall the company is growing by 26 percent as you can see some of the products are degrowing some of them are growing for example action figure it is degrowing by 30 percent right similarly we can analyze this for location as well so if i click on stores right so instead of product i'll just take store name right so you can see here for each and every store name i'm getting the sales ytd sales last year ytd sales mtd sales ytd growth percentage so this is very very useful now before moving ahead with the dashboard it is very important for us to save the report till now we have not so you should not do this mistake whenever you are working on any report you can just click on save as and keep your file saved so that you are not losing anything right so you can just keep anything maven sales analytics right and enter right so now whenever you are changing anything you can just click on control plus s and your work will be saved right so now let's see what we have to create 
so if I go to my existing original sales analysis this is what we have to create right so first of all let's see how the data cards are there right so one is total sales then there is YTD sales then LY YTD MTD and last year MTD so we have these five measures with us right we just need to arrange them right let me just keep all these filters towards the left and we can rearrange later on right now my first card is total sales then YTD total sales is this this one right then YTD is this so first of all let me just create this values can be slightly smaller if you want to keep it in blue you can press it over here units it should be none because I want to show it complete right and decimal value should be up to 2 so if I go towards my analysis this is how it should look like so to save time what I, I will do is I'll just control C I'll copy this data card and paste it over here so what it will give me is the template overall template but I'll just tell you how I created this if I click on this particular temp uh, this data card go to this format click on general and there is effects right so background is white you will just add visual border right the color would be dark blue rounded corners let's say it's seven then click on shadow because this is shadow with the same color right so you can see this is similar right now you can make uh, the label as bold so if you go towards format category label click on B B is for bold right so you can see this is bold now so it is up to you up to your creativity what kind of data set you want to create on and what is the creativity level right so whatever I have I will just copy and paste for the time being and you can use these for your reference right I'll just click over paste perfect right so now we have uh, the data cards with us let me see if we have the right key measure correct this is also perfect this is also right and then YTD is also perfect and total sales is perfect so now we have all the data cards with us I can just delete them right if you want to add the reset button you will just click on insert click on buttons or you can click on shapes for this I'll click on this one right I'll just drag it over here click on style go to text click on text and it is reset right you can make it bold you can increase the text size reduce this and your reset button is ready right so now you have this uh, data cards you have reset button let me just create the table so now if you see there is a huge difference between this table right and that table but before this can we add uh, financial year month year and then add this table so from this table we can understand month on month sales data progress right so for this if you go back I'll add one stacked column chart right I will add month here in this and then I will add sales also so you can see we can have some data uh, and add the data labels and the value should not be in any display units it should be none right with decimal values up to 2 
So if I have added financial year as 2022 selected, right? So it will show me from July. Uh, so let me just sort it on the basis of month year, right? And then sort ascending. All right. So now what we have to see is it should be like April, May, June, July, August, September, right? But it is ascending on the name. So if the month is starting from A, it will come first. So for this, we have to keep this particular column as sorted, right? If I go to date table, let me see if the month here is sorted by the particular column. No. So for that, we have to add that column, right? So to sort this. All right. So let's go to creating the sorting column create new column this is month year sort so this is how the column will be sorted right so let's create some variables I will explain this this is slightly trickier if you are a beginner right variable uh, let's keep the abbreviation month year or to be easier my equal to date difference date difference is a, a function a tax function which returns the number of units interval between the two dates right so it would be date start of the year comma date right so whatever is the interval between these two on the basis of month right this is my day difference plus one this is my variable one then i want to return if my is less than 10 then it should be fiscal year and keep it as zero i will explain you this and m y right comma if not if it is not less than 10 right if it is less than 10 then take this otherwise take fiscal year and y and bracket closed so what it is doing is in this particular variable my i am getting an interval so what is whatever is the date difference whatever is the difference in the start of year and date in terms of month right that value plus one that is my if that particular value is less than 10 then it should be fiscal year fiscal year is this one right 2021 and 0 and whatever is the value coming from here you will understand this let me just press enter or click here so now you can see the month year sort you can see year with the 0 1 so if you just see over here you can see for first four characters you will see that is year 2021 or 2022 and then there will be month 01020304 so 01 is depicting april month because we have to start from april if it is from january then for january it will be 01 right so formula is this only to understand make power bi understand that april is my first month right so if we are having my date difference for example in this scenario my start of year is 0104 and date is 0104 right so there is no difference so date if is 0 plus 1 is 1 so in our first case my will be 1 that is less than 10 then that means i will get this value so from this i will get fiscal fiscal year as 2021 and then 0 and then whatever is my value coming from here that is 1 so 2021 0 and 1 right so this is how we will create the sort column and now i have to sort month here 
on the basis of this sort. So I'll click on sort by column and click on month year sort. Right. So now this month year has been sorted. If I go back to the dashboard, you will be seeing the difference. Now it is April, May, June, July, August, September. So it is perfect now. Alright, so you can see total sales is increasing, decreasing. You can see the pattern. Now, if we go back to our original dashboard, we have month year, then total sales, month on month percentage, and YTV growth percentage. Right. So now I will add in the tooltip. You can see if I hover here, I am not getting YTD percentage. So what I can do is go to this per particular place this is my tooltip area right I can add YTD growth percentage I can add YTD sales also I can add MTD sales last year YTD so if you hover now you can see all these data cards values are coming here and this is really helpful you will be able to see all the difference you can see till the month of June you can see there is a 22 percent growth right so now we have created this card graph if we go back to our original one so let's create this location wise sales this is quite typical we have to add a map and add the store so store city it is not defined any particular category right now you can see it is uncategorized so if you click here it is a city so you can just click on city so that the power bi understands that this particular field is a city and now you can see there is a globe over here that means power bi has recognized this particular field as city if you click here it will be mapped here in the map right now if you can add the sales in the bubble size One second cross here in the bubble size if you can add the sum you will see all the bubbles whichever is the big bubble the sale is sales is higher small bubble means sales is low and as you can see these are the areas where we are getting sales South America there are only three or two locations most mostly we are having here in North America Mexico area right so now we have the graph as well if we go back this particular graph is very important store location total sales ytd last year ytd and ytd growth right if we go back i will add store then we have total sales ytd last year ytd let me remove other ones product name remove we have total sales ytd ly ytd mtd remove now here one important thing is i have to add the conditional formatting for ytd growth right so if i click on arrow in ytd conditional formatting and icons i have to add icons on the basis of their growth so i want the growth from 0 to 10 in one particular icon from 10 to any beyond 10% uh, for one particular icon and any growth which is degrowth like z less than zero that is red so it should be greater than let's say minus 100 in numbers less than zero in numbers this is red right and from zero which is number to we want till 10 percent right so it would be 0 0.1 it is in green and from 0 0.1 till 100 that is let's say this one and now we want apply to values and total both and click ok so now you can see if i click on focus mode 
the icons are there you can easily see if there is a growth or degrowth right so you can see if it is green there is a there is a growth if there is a red there is a degrowth and you can see the difference if there is a growth of uh, more than 10 percent it is with tick mark if it is between 0 to 10 it is just green right so this is how you can create all right so this has been created we just need to create the color formatting and everything otherwise we have all the functionality similarly we can create for product and this particular graph this shows me top five products by revenue so for this how to create i will have one stack bar chart right i will have products product name right this is my product name and now i want sales sales is ytd sales versus last year ytd all right so for this i want clustered bar right so now you can see over here i have all the products now i want to filter out only top five products so for this i will use the filter panel i will add the product names click on top end i want top five products on the basis of my ytd sales right and then apply filter now you'll see there are only five but uh, top five uh, items which are sold number one is lego then second is magic sand third is color birds then there is rubik cube then dino egg right so this is how we can create so you know we have created all these graphs now we have to work on our beautification how to create it more impactful so that someone who is reading or visualizing can understand it in a much faster way because if we have filters you can filter out any product you can filter out any store you can filter out any location it is very very useful right so now to understand it better i'll just copy this and use this in our existing dashboard right and remove this second so if you see this creates a lot of impact if you are using good colors and these are in contrast you can see functionality wise this dashboard and this dashboard both are same but this is looking so much professional right and this is not so for that we will use some cards tricks for example if in uh, this particular graph i go to format your visual go to general go to effects i can create some background here i need to have visual border of let's say blue color rounded corners as seven shadow is on right you can see there is a huge impact already now if i go back you can see the background is blue and the bars or column bars are in yellow so i click here click here go to general effects background as blue right and now i want to use the columns my default is blue now it has to be yellow right so this is how we can change and now if i have to change the title name go to general title this is my total sales month wise let's say right and it should be in white and it should be in center and it should be bold so this is how you can use visualization panel to make it more attractive right now if i have to change the color of the labels then go to visual 
click on data labels right go to values click on color color we can have the same yellow right with bold now it's looking better and go to x axis i want to remove the title and the color for these should be white right now you can see the months go to y axis i want to remove i don't want y axis right so now it's looking so much better right similarly what you can do is the best trick is you click here click on format painter and click on all other graphs so it will have all the pro the properties of that existing graph right Now we have to make many more changes. If you click here, see the legends here are in black, right? So you have to make it in yellow. Click here, go to legend, text, color is yellow. And it should be bold. So this is how you can change the formatting here if you want to have the same formatting as this one this is looking good right so what we have done is if you go back here I will add store name then store city and store location for example which one is the first one let me see here store location city and name correct and what is the alignment first is downtown and then all other under downtown Alright, so I'll just format, uh, sort this on the basis of sales, right? So now downtown is on top, click on downtown, right? Now you have this one, go to format style preset, it should be condensed or minimal, whatever suits you. Let me see which one I have used for this particular graph visual style preset it is condensed right go back click here click over a preset it is condensed right now you can change the color so if you want to change the color of columns go to columns background should be same right it should be bold it should be aligned centrally right so this is done column header is done now we will talk about row headers go to row headers it is bold text is white background is yellow I guess right and text is blue right looks similar and here also the totals we have to change let me see it is in grand total it should be blue okay now all right Is this the one no I have to check this because we have to change the color of this as well if you we go back here right so column header is fine then row header is fine then column subtotals it is also same row subtotals is also same column grand totals all right so column grand total 
if you go back to column grand total all right background is yellow okay it has not been changed so let's see row grand total aha yeah so for this we have to use row grand total so yeah logically it makes sense so this is the grand total for row and we are getting this right you can change the text color because white is not coming properly right you can use black or blue oops this is yellow text color is blue right so now you can see it is looking better right you can give more space if you want to like this now you can see the percentage overall is 26.38 you can see which are growing which are not growing you can see these are not growing if you want to have the backgrounds as red or something which are showing negative growth so that you can see it properly you can do that as well for that you have to go to conditional formatting of ytd growth percentage and click on background color instead of icons so currently i have taken icons you can change the font color you can change the background color you can add the data bars according to the need so this is very interesting this is how you can build the storytelling right so this is how you, you have created this right so you can add the data cards and filters like this and if you are looking for this particular line so this is just an object so if i click on insert go to shapes click on line right currently it is horizontally aligned click on rotate all as 90 degree it will be aligned vertically right so now you can use this for your purpose right so this is how you can create so if you feel there is any challenge please let me know because i don't want to create everything at one go it is already there i'll share this pbx with you so that you can use this pbx you can understand the properties you can see this filter how the filters are working and what are the font size what is the title text what is the color and you can use them wherever you want to you can use this in your project there is nothing uh, you know hidden over here right so one more thing like uh, for example reset so how to use this reset for example if i click on fy2122 now i want to click let's say go to this particular one i have clicked here then i have clicked on electronics right then i have clicked on december so now i have clicked so many uh, elements right i want to get back to my default version how will you do that i will click on reset right just one click and everything is at the default how you will do this so for example once you are done with your uh, dashboard everything is done click on view go to bookmarks right and click on add right for example if i go back and you want default as fy2122 this is the default you want right so what you will do is go to bookmark click add you can rename anyone reset as 2122 and press enter now one more step is click on reset go to action over here and then type is bookmark which bookmark reset 2122 right so now this reset button has been selected and resetted now if you do this click on 22 23 right now if you reset it will go back to 21 22 as simple as that so this is very useful reset button is very useful if you want to work on any project this is used everywhere
right so this is how you create a report if we go back to our instructions steps first was import data that is the step number one where we are importing all the relevant data then adding columns in the sales table as required then creating grade table then creating the relationships creating the measures like ytd mtd ytd growth percentage and then creating the dashboard this is our output right so this is it guys so this is how you have to create the power bi reports so there are a couple of tips i would like to give you to upgrade or you have to upscale yourself in power bi so these are if you are short of space it is very important to organize your data for example uh, if you want to keep a separate panel for all these filters so you have one two three four five six seven filters right so what we can do is we can create a panel of these and we can hide that right we can hide that in the dashboard and if someone clicks on that filter then this panel will be popped up and you can use that filter for the usage in the dashboard right so right now if you hide this you will have this space extra you can add more visuals and you can work on that right so how to do that like for example i'll just click here right i'll add one more shape let's say rectangle right so you can format and send to back right so this is what it is go to view then go to selection right so if you select it over here you can see this is my shape right and if i want to see what is my one second go to format send to back again so if, if I want to see what is my financial is this one is slicer. Let me just rename this to make it easier. Fy slicer. Then this is month slicer. This is product slicer. name slicer store name slicer oh. all right so i have just changed it this is store name slicer let's just keep it like as it is right now stored location is done store city slicer so we have the slicer one two three four five six right and then financial slicer seven and finally shape all right this not this one this one All right, so no, this is not the shape. One second, where is the shape? All right, this one. So now I'll select shape. I'll select product slicer, month slicer, FY slicer, name slicer, store slicer, store name slicer, city slicer. So I have selected everything which is required. I'll just right click and group. So this is one group I have created this will act like my uh, panel so if i click on i button so this is gone right and if i click again it is back so what i'll do is second yeah so you will use this to create the panel again go to the view click bookmarks right so this is one page where you are able to see the panel 
right click on add this is show panel right now if you click on hide now again add bookmark it should be hide panel right so now if you just remove this and on toy story click on action and bookmark i say if you click on toy story then i should get the panel then it should be show panel right so now if i click on toy story my panel is back right so this is how you create and you can uh, easily remove this also if you click again to the selection click here right so once this is there you can use the panel once you are done with the panel you can easily remove and hide this and you can work with the existing dashboard right so this is very useful it is used in all the uh, domains even in uh, inventory it is used in production finance not only in sales right i hope this video was useful to you it was slightly longer but it is carrying all the important concepts for the power bi project right so if you have any question please comment below i will share all the files required in the comments and you can use them for your practice see if you are learning power bi if you are new to power bi it is very important for you to learn and practice more without practice if you watch my video or anyone's video again and again and practice nothing you won't learn it is very important to watch the video pause and practice and then watch again and then pause again and practice it is very important to practice 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 otherwise you won't be able to learn much right so i hope this video was very useful to you power bi is very powerful if you are in data analysis please learn power bi this will help you in your present as well as future thank you guys for watching this video please subscribe if you are new to this channel and if you liked this video please like and share with your friends this can help them as well thank you